Hey everybody, welcome back to Bolt Box Commander. My name is Kellex, and today we're going to be doing another deck tech. This time we're going to be featuring Ferret Enterprising Salvager. Now, if you enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel as it really helps me out a lot. Now, before we get into the deck tech, there is a couple of things I wanted to bring up. Uh, it was brought to my attention here recently that I was not getting any messages through on my YouTube channel and come to find out that there was a couple of features that were accidentally deactivated or turned off. So I did get that problem fixed. So now you'll be able to send me any messages and comments. Uh, second of all, just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed to the channel and watched my videos. It really does mean a lot and I do appreciate the feedback that you've left behind. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So, so this is a legendary creature, human soldier, 3-3. Three, three, and he says, when a non-token artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create a colorless artifact token named Scrap. Now you can pay one red, one colorless, sacrifice an artifact, and choose one. You got three options. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Ferret. It gains menace to the end of turn. You can go target creature, or you can discard a card and draw a card. So I decided to go with the gold theme with this deck. Now, normally you would see gold in, in a Rakdos deck, but I decided to try this with a mono red, and I've played tested it a few times and have had a little bit of success with it, so I wanted to share this list with you that I have. So let's start out with the lands in this deck. Now, I'm running 26 basic mountains, and then I'm only running four uncommon lands, the Mines of Moria, Mystifying Maze, Buried Ruin, Vault of Fault. Now, as far as creatures, um, there's quite a few creatures in here, and most of them are going to be artifact creatures, and there's a lot of synergy that comes with this list. So let's start off by taking a look at the creatures in here. So, of course, we're running Ornithopter, the best uh, chump blocker. We also run Ragavan Nimble Pilfer. It's a uh, one red mana, two one monkey. It says when Ragavan Pil Nimble Pilfer deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library until the end of turn you may cast that card. Again, it has the uh, dash ability. So uh, I put him in here basically for hopefully a quick uh, damage and create uh, treasure tokens to build up for sacrificing. Then we have the Taunting Kobold. One red mana, zero one with haste. Whenever Taunting Kobold attacks, go target creature and opponent controls. Then we're also running Ginger Brute. One colorless, one one food golem with haste. You can pay one, and ginger brook cannot be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. Or you can pay two and tap and sack it to gain three life. So this is a really good card to get in quick with quick damage. It's basically unblockable. Uh, you can actually Voltron him out if you want to. I've seen that done before. So next we have Insufferable Balladeer, one colorless, one red, two one, dwarf bard with Vicious Mockery. And it says when Insufferable Balladeer enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn, goad it. So right away you're going to see we've got, we're going to have quite a few creatures that have the goad ability built into them. Uh, then the next one is going to be Riveteer's Requisitioner. One colorless, one red, three one, rogue. When Riveteer's requ requisitioner dies, create a treasure token. And it also has the blitz ability. So this is a little bit of ramp ability to create treasure tokens in the early game. Uh, Gleaming Barrier, uh, two colorless, zero four artifact creature wall with defender. And it says when Gleaming Barrier dies, create a treasure token. So once again, uh, creating treasure tokens, plus we have a little bit of defense 
while we're golding out as well. Then we have Charming Scoundrel, one color is one red, one one, human rogue with haste. When Charming Scoundrel enters the battlefield, choose one, discard a card and draw a card, create a treasure token, or create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. So mostly I've just been using this one for the treasure token, for the, of course, for the ramping. But uh, there is a case in that I've actually used it as a little bit of a draw engine. So it's got some versatility with it. And next we have the Reckless Fire Weaver. It's one color, it's one red, one three. When an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fire Weaver deals one damage to each opponent. Now this card is a is a little powerhouse to itself because it does so much when you're playing an artifact based deck like this one, and it also has seen a lot of other play in uh, Obnixilus decks as well. Then we have Loyal Apprentice. Now this is a great card to have because it creates free chump blockers for you every turn as long as you control your commander. It's a two one Haster. With Lieutenant, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create a 1-1 one, one colors doctor artifact creature token with flying. That token gains haste to the end of turn. So, uh, once again, uh, more uh, sack fodder for ferret to go to your opponents. And we have Perilous Mirror. Two colors, 1-1. One, one. When Perilous Mirror dies, it deals 2 dash to any target. So... Great Sack Outlet and Pinger all in one. Then we have the Plundering Barbarian. Two colors, one red, two two. When Plundering Barbarian enters the battlefield, choose one. You can destroy a target artifact or create a treasure token. Uh, this card is very underrated. I think it should see more play in the format because it does so much. And it's got a decent body on it as well. Then we have Bergy, God of Storytelling. Two colors, one red, three, three, legendary god. Whenever you cast a spell, add red mana. Until end of your turn, you don't lose this mana as mana steps and phases end. Creatures you control can boast twice during each of your turns rather than once. So Bergy is also sort of a ramp uh, option that you that I put in this deck. I very rarely turn to this backside to use, so, but I mostly use it for the fact that for casting, you know, especially with a lot of low casting CMCs to build up uh, red in my mana pool so I can cast more things. So this is just a great card overall. Then we have the Simeon Spirit Guide, two colors, one red, two, two. Exile Simeon Spirit Guide from your hand. Add one red mana to your mana pool. Uh, this is just another ramp source right here. Quark Clan Stoker. Two colors, one red, two, two. Goblin Shaman. You can tap and sacrifice an artifact to add two red to your mana pool. Uh, once again, it's just a, um, a, a ramp card. I've used this several times to create at least eight to ten mana on a turn and when you can do something like that, you can do a lot of explosive things. Then we have the Professional Facebreaker. Two colors, one red, two, three. Human Warrior with Menace. When one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, and you can sack a treasure token, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Uh, this is another all-star in this deck, you know, for the fact of creating treasure tokens. Uh, also with the miss, so it's a little harder to block. I've used them mostly just for creating the treasure tokens. And every so often I'll, I'll exile, I'll use the exile effect to help uh, draw cards as well. Then we have Gadrick, the Crown Scourge. Two colors, one red, 5-4 Flying Dragon. When Gadrick, the Crown Scourge, can't attack unless you control four more artifacts. And at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died his turn. So I've got a lot of artifacts in this deck that are very easy to sack. Uh, not only just to power up uh, Ferret, but also to power up Gadrick as well. And it's very easy to have four man uh, artifacts on the battlefield because you're going to be creating a lot of treasure tokens. 
So this is just a really good, solid uh, flying creature. Then we have Scrap Trawler, three colors, three, two, artifact creature construct. When Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. Uh, this one, I've not really been all that impressed with it as much as I, would, I was expecting. It does have a few nice uh, abilities on it, but more often than not, I've really not been able to, um, you know, get the most benefit out of it that this card would produce. I mean, uh, there's just a couple of artifacts that I could actually recur from the graveyard that would actually make a difference. But I'm still keeping it because it is a blocker, it is an artifact, and we can use it to fuel uh, for it as well. Next, we have Zorn. Two colors, one red, three, two elemental. If you would create one more treasure tokens, instead create those treasure tokens plus additional treasure token. So this goes hand in hand with um, the professional face breaker. Uh, and some of the dragons that I run in this deck that actually create treasure tokens. So it's just, it's just an outstanding card to have. Then we run Filigree Familiar, three colors, two, two. When Filigree Familiar enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Then when he dies, you draw a card. So I, this is sack fodder, a plus life gain, you know, really handy to have in this deck. Then we have Felden of the Third Path, one color is two red, two three human artificer. You can pay two colors and one red, tap it, create a treasure token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste to sack it at the beginning of the next instep. So I've actually used him several times to bring back a certain creatures from the graveyard and then just re them to feel ferret again. I mean, this is a very versatile card, and it really helps to make the deck pop. Then we have Captain Lannery Storm, two colors, one red, two, two, legendary creature, human pirate with haste. When Captain Lannery Storm attacks, create a treasure token, and whenever you sacrifice a treasure, Captain Lannery Storm gets a plus one, plus zero to either turn. So, um, once again, we're just creating treasure tokens, fueling ferret, uh, ramping, and then we can sack to make, um, you know, Captain Storm a big beater. All right, then we get into one of my favorite cards of all time, Academy Manufacturer. This is a three colorless, one three assembly worker. And it says if you would create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. So this is so so powerful because you're going to be creating treasure tokens like crazy anyway and then you're getting the bonus of creating food and clues that you could you know be using to uh, gain life with or draw cards with so this is a, a outstanding creature then we have the workshop assistant three colorless one two construct one workshop assistant dies return another target artifact card from the graveyard to your hand. Uh, once again, uh, graveyard recursion, is, as, as you can tell, it's been very uh, key in this because I'm bringing back lots of sackable uh, artifacts from the graveyard to fuel ferret. And uh, this guy, you know, he does his job just as good as anybody else does. Then we have Togo, Goblin Weaponsmith. Two colors, one red, two two Goblin Artificer. It says, when a land enters a battlefield under your control, create a colorless equipment artifact token named Rock with equipped creature has pay one colors, tap, sack the rock. This creature deals two damage to any target and equip one. And also has the partner ability. So I, I basically put Togo in this deck to create those rocks to help keep um, fair field for goading. And... Um, Toggler's usually run in some other decks, well, maybe like with Malcolm Keenai Navigator, but in this deck, it, it, it's proved to be very, um, very efficient, and I've been really pleased with how it's played. Next creature we have is Fanatic Amogus. This is three 
colors, one red, four to Minotaur Shaman that says when Fanatica Mogus enters the battlefield, it deals damage to each opponent equal to devotion to red. So this, you know, this card is, you know, a big, big hitter. And the fact that, you know, since we are mono red, our devotion is going to be, you know, extremely high. So this could actually, you know, possibly even take you know, one person out of the game with direct damage. So it's just a, a great include for this list. Then next we have the Stone Retrieval Unit. Four colorless, two, three construct. When Stone Retrieval Unit enters the battlefield, create a tap Power Stone token. Now, uh, this is, uh, once again, create two sources of uh, sack fodder to power up Ferret for goading. Plus, it's a blocker. Uh, just another great card to have as well. Then we have, you know, everybody's sad robot, Solemn Simulacrum. Four colorless mana, two, two golem. When Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put that card in the battlefield tap and shuffle, and then we die as you draw a card. Uh, I like the fact that I can sack him and uh, get a card draw off of it. You know, he's he's an all star in his own right. Then we have Havoc Jester, four colors, one red, five, five devil. When you sack a permanent, Havoc Jester deals one damage to any target. So, you know, once again, more direct damage de dealing. Um, I was kind of hesitant on putting this one in because it does have a little high CMC. But once I played with it a couple of times, I've seen how efficient it was. I, I decided to go ahead and keep them in there. Now, we'll get into a couple of the dragons that I run. So first, we'll start off with Rapacious Dragon. Four colors, one red, three, three flying. When Rapacious Dragon enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. Uh, once again, sack outlets, ramp, plus this is a good blocker in the web. Then we also have Ganex, Astro Hunter, four colors, one red, three, four flying dragon. When Ganex, Astro Hunter, or another dragon enters the battlefield in your control, create a treasure token. So, you prefer to have this one out before, before you get any others because, you know, it helps you uh, create the treasure token, it helps with the ramp and accelerate. And uh, I used to run this one with Rapacious in my uh, mono red deck with Magda. And, you know, I've seen how good they work together in that deck. So I figured I'd put them in this one. And they've done just as good. Then we have Gold Span Dragon. Three colors, two red, four, four dragon with flying and haste. And Gold Span Dragon attacks and becomes a target of a spell. Create a treasure token. Now, here's the next part I really like. Treasures you control have tap sacrifices artifact at two men of any one color. So, this gets really out of hand really quick. I mean, your deck is going to... You, if you can sit there and sacrifice or tap treasure tokens and add two, that's just going to accelerate your deck even faster. It's just a great way to do more ramp. Then, we've got Lathless Dragon Queen. Four colors, two red, six, six. Flying, when another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a five, five red dragon creature target with flying. Then you can pay one colors, one red, dragons you control get plus one, plus zero to the turn. Uh, very underrated card. It's it's brutal. I have played with and against uh, Lathless both uh, online and in paper games, and this this dragon has never disappointed. It's so powerful to fill your field up with dragons like you can. I mean, it's just, this could just actually help create your finishing for your games. Now, we also have Geo Rager. Four colors, two red, first strike, four, three, with a landfall ability. It says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, go to each creature target player controls. So basically, you just use this guy to uh, uh, make one one of your opponents just start taking out the others for you, do all your dirty work for you. And this card has really, really impressed me. 
At first, I was afraid it was going to be a little slow because of the landfall ability. But with the ability for us to create a lot of treasure tokens, it actually frees up our land to be able to cast spells. And, uh, you know, I, I like it. I think I think he's very underrated. And, you know, can't complain about it. Uh, we also have Draco Seth Maul of Flames. Now, this one is the four colors, triple red, seven, seven. Whenever Draco Seth Maul of Flames attacks, it deals four damage to each target and three damage to each of the two other targets. So this can basically be a one-shot kill or mini board wipe. Uh, it's a real, it's a it's a powerhouse in itself with such a big body. You know, it's a great include for this. Now we also run Mirror Battlesphere, seven colorless, four seven construct. When Mill Mirror Battlesphere enters the battlefield, create four one one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens. And whenever Mirror Battlesphere attacks. You may tap X, untap mirror you control. If, if you do, mirror battle sphere gets plus X, plus zero until end of turn, and deals X damage to the power to the player or planeswalker is attacking. So normally I, I would just use this to uh, get the mirror tokens for sacrifice fodder for fairy, um, and just use it as blocker. Very rarely I actually attack with this one. I, I usually leave my attacks uh, up to the dragons to take care of business. All right, so we're going to now take a look at the uh, instance of sorceries that are running in this deck. So we'll start off with Lightning Bolt, classic uh, one drop. Lightning Bolt deals three damage to your target. We're also running Smelt. Um, one red pip, instant destroy target artifact. Very efficient and mana costing for destroying your opponent's uh, turn one soul ring or turn one arcane signet. Then we also run pyro blast with one red pip. It's an instant counter target spell if it is blue or destroy target permanent if it's blue. Now, a lot of times you may not even get to play this card, but depending on uh, the pot that you're playing in. You're not always going to run into a blue player. I mean, it, it can be a dead card in your hand, but I still like to have it just in case uh, somebody is playing blue, and this could actually help stop somebody's uh, uh, blue commander coming out or triggering something that may actually help them win the game. We got a little bit of card draw with Thrill of Possibility. One colors, one red instant, and additional cost to cast a spell, draw two cards. Then we have Wild Magic Surge, two red instant, destroy target permanent opponent controls. Its controller reveals cards from the top of the, their library until they reveal a permanent card that shares a card type with that permanent. They put that card onto the battlefield and the rest of the bottom of the library in random order. Now, I have used this to remove uh, big threats on the board. And I've also even used it in, against myself to help me fetch up more uh, artifacts, whether it be artifact or artifact creatures. And I like the flexibility that this card offers. And I highly recommend it. For almost any deck that runs red, because like I said, it can answer or get rid of a big uh, threat on the board. Chaos Warp does basically the same thing. Two colors, one red. The owner target permit shuffles it to the library, then reveals the top card of the library. If it's a permit card, they put it on the battlefield. Uh, once again, this is a you know great uh, removal. Although there is a downside, your opponent can actually uh, top deck something that was probably worse than what you just chaos warped away. But a lot of times, I you know I have seen it actually answer a threat, and for me, it's a must include in any deck that runs red. Now the next one is big score three colors, one red 
instant as an additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card, draw two cards, and create two treasure tokens. Uh, this is great for card draw, of course. I am creating the treasure tokens. And uh, and with uh, gold span dragons out on the field, you can basically uh, you'll create almost four sources. So this is just a great card in itself. Now the sorceries, uh, we only run, I think, maybe three or four in this list. Uh, the, the most uh, uh, famous one of them is going to be a Blasphemous Act. Eight colors, one red. Blasphemous Act deals costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. And it deals 13 damage to each creature. This is just your basic mono red, more white. Uh, then we also have a Rite of Flame for one red. Add two red, then add one red for each card named Rite of Flame in your graveyard. So in Commanders, we know you're only allowed one copy of each card, except for basic lands. But this still does give you the, the opportunity to get three red mana for the cost of one. Uh, then we have the... Uh, Sorcery version of Thrill Possibility with Tormenting Voice. One color is one red. It's additional cost of the spell. Discard a card, draw two cards. Um, another uh, great board wipe we have uh, in here is Chain Reaction. Two colors, two red. Sorcery. Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Uh, like I said, this is a board wipe. This one's not as you know as well known as Blasphemous Act, but what I like about it, it doesn't worry about power and toughness. Unlike so, if let's say for example, with Blasphemous Act, you're only just thirteen. But if your opponent has a big creature that's fourteen, fourteen or fifteen, fifteen or whatever, it'll survive. Chain reaction gets around that problem. So I like it as a second. Uh, board wipe for this deck. Then, uh, in the last spot for the sorcerers, we have Brass's Bounty. Six colors, one red sorcery. For each land you control, create a treasure token. Now, this one, uh, I'm not really worried about getting big mana with this. But I have put it in here just in case if uh, I am actually needing some treasures to sacrifice to uh, Farid. So that's the main reason why Brass is Bounty made the cut. Now, as far as enchantments, I only run two. Uh, we'll go with, so the first one is going to be Shiny Impetus. Now this is part another piece to the goading package that the stick has. For two colors, one red, you can enchant creature, and enchant creature gets a plus two, plus two, and is goaded. And whenever enchanted creature attacks, you create a treasure token. So it's a, it's a, it's a great investment for the board because whenever your opponent's creature attacks, you're getting treasures off of it anyway. And that's just going to help build up your treasure for casting more spells or sacking them for goading. I mean, yes, your opponent does get, that creature does get additional plus two, plus two, but it's, you're using that creature to take out your opponents first. And then another one, uh, with similar card, Vow of Lightning, uh, two colors, one red, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus, plus, plus two, plus two, has first strike and can't attack you or planeswalker you control. So another piece to the goading package. Now we're going to get into the, the actual artifacts of the deck. And I went with a, a theme of trying to keep my CMCs very low as much as possible. Because like, like I said before, I like to be very efficient with my cards. I like to get the most bang for my buck. So let's we'll start off with Mistress Bobble. This is an all-star card itself. Zero cost. You can tap it. And sack it to look at top card of target player's library. Draw a card to begin the next turn's upkeep. So I don't use it really for it at first line. I mean, you can use it, but I mainly use it as a uh, sacrifice target for uh, Farid to goad. Uh, 
and plus I still get a car draw so you know it's it's a great include then we have skull clamp uh, uh, EDH all-star in itself one colorless equipment equipped creature gets plus one negative one and would equipped creatures put it to a graveyard draw two cards so this is just another draw engine piece um, everybody knows about how efficient skull clamp really is and you know I could not resist you know putting it in here then we have uh, the classic turn one soul ring card one colors tap to add two colors you know soul ring best card in the format elixir of immortality one colorless you can pay two and tap it you gain five life shuffle elixir of immortality and your graveyard to your owner's library so uh a little bit of life gain there plus we also get to shuffle in a bunch of all these artifacts that we've used up in the past and get to reuse them again it's just a good card uh, mind stone two colorless tap the Tap it to add one color to your mana pool. You can pay one and sack it to draw a card. Lightning Greaves. Two colorless. Equipped creature has haste and shroud. Now, a lot of decks, I don't really like to use Lightning Greaves. I learned, like, especially in decks like Light Paws, it's a, it's a dead card because... Once you put lightning greaves onto a creature, it can be targeted by your own things. So it's it's really a very um, situational play. You know, I mean, it's a great card, but in, for this deck, um, I felt it was appropriate to put it in here because Farid would not be getting equipped or I'm not going to be targeting him with anything special. So this is the reason why I included it in this listing. Now, we also have Icker Wellspring, two colorless artifact. When Icker Wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. So, for two mana, you get two card draws. I'd say that's pretty efficient in its own. Now, I'll, along with the Lightning Greaves, I also do have Swift Foot Boots. And I decided to include both pieces of uh, creature protection because I am running you know, certain dragons that I want to keep on the field. But Swift Foot Boots is actually uh, probably a, a better card overall than Lightning Greaves for the fact that you can target your equipped creature, where with Lightning Greaves you couldn't. So, you know, it's a two-drop. Equipped creature has Hexproof and Haste. So, and that's another benefit I like about it. You know, it does have Hexproof and Haste. So, uh... If I'm building a deck, the first one that I normally uh, reach for is going to be Swift Foot Boots and maybe Lightning Groups, depending on the build that I'm wanting to do. Now, Idol, Idol of Oblivion is a two-drop artifact, and this one's really interesting. doesn't see a whole lot of uh, EDH play, but I found it to be very helpful with this deck. So basically, you just tap it to draw a card, activate only if you created a token this turn. Well, we're creating tons of treasure tokens, so that's not going to be a problem. And it has a special ability also, if you pay eight, tap it, sack the idol, create a 10 10 color Adrazi creature token. Most of the time, I'm really not going to use that unless I just need a big, beefy blocker on the field. But most of the time, I'm going to use it as a draw engine. Now, we also have Liquid Metal Tort, 2-drop. Tap to add one colorless. Tap to target non-land permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until the end of turn. So, I did put this one in here for the simple fact if, if I was at a point where I needed something to sacrifice... I, uh, I, could sac I could target one of my regular uh, creatures, turn it into an artifact, sack it to Farid, and, you know, continue the goading process. So this was coming pretty handy as well. Then we also had the Michael Synth Wellspring, two drop. 
when the microsoft wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card reveal it put it in your hand and shuffle your library so uh, i like this because you do get to fetch a land card and you don't have to worry about it coming into play tap um, you, you know that's one thing i really like because you know, I, I, i'd like for all my lands to come into play untapped so i can use them right away uh, this really does a good job for that, plus it's a, another sack outlet for my commander. All right, and we also we, we run Elsewhere Flask to drop. When Elsewhere Flask enters battlefield, draw a card. You can sack it to choose a basic land type. Each land you control becomes that type until the end of turn. So I don't need, I don't use it for that second ability, but the first one is the main reason why I put it in here. It's just more card draw, more sack fodder. Next, we had the Nimble Right Schematic to drop artifact. When Nimble Right Schematic enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 1 1 colors construct artifact creature token. So, this card has been a, has just been amazing. I've used it so many times to sit there and just you know, trigger off my commander multiple times. You know, it creates a 1-1 one -one as well. It's just a really good card. You know, it's actually kind of one of my favorite cards in this deck because of its dual abilities. Then we have Arcane Signet, two, two colors, tap to add one man of any color to a man's pool. Uh, uh, now, even though I am running mono red i still put this in here for the simple fact that you can ramp with it but it's also a sack outlet or sack fodder for my commander and that's the only reason why i put this in here normally i wouldn't but for this type of deck and what we're doing i feel like this would be good to include as well now we have scrap heap now this is an older artifact the three drop whenever an artifact or enchantment is put into your graveyard from play you gain one life so as we're uh, as we talked about a bunch already we're going to be sacking a lot of artifacts we're sacking tokens you know we sack on those uh artifacts you know we're going to be gaining life off of it and it's just it's just a great way to keep your life total up while you wait for your opponents to kill each other we also run for Slagstone Refinery. Now, this is a four drop. When Slagstone Refinery or another non token artifact you control is put into graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. Once again, this is more sack fodder for our commander, and it's, uh, it's found a home in this deck. And the last artifact we've got is the Trading Post. Now, this is one of my favorite cards from way back in the old standard days. It's a four drop, and it has four separate abilities. So you can pay one colorless, tap it. Discard a card, you gain four life. Pay one colorless, tap it. Pay one life, put a zero one white goat creature token on the battlefield. Pay one colorless. Tap it, sack a creature, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, and pay one to have sack an artifact draw a card. Now, mostly this card is put in here just to bring back artifacts from the graveyard. You know, just basically for recursion. Uh, occasionally, I, I might uh, make a GOAT token just for a chunk blocker, so it is good in that aspect. But mostly we, we use this for the the graveyard recursion for the artifacts being put in during the game. Now, I do run two Planeswalkers in this deck. Now, normally, I don't really like to run a whole lot of Planeswalkers because they're just instant targets for your opponents. And uh, I did choose two of these, and I'll tell you why for in just a second. So... So the first one I chose was Ugin the Ineffable. This is a six drop. 
and it says colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast now i i chose that because i am playing a lot of artifacts now there are other artifact creatures that help cheapen the cost but i didn't really want to go into that big of a artifact creature uh thing to where i'm just i i'm, I'm going to rely on it because i've run into that trap before so I figure with what I've got right here in this package is going to be more than enough uh, artifact creatures to do what I need it to do. So it starts off with four loyalty counters. You can add one and exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 two, two colorless creature, spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, you put the exile card into your hand. Uh, mostly, if I activate that, it's going to be just for creating chump blockers. Then it also has negative three, destroy target permanents with one or more colors. So normally, if I put Ugin out, my main intention is to just to create the free chump blockers on the ground. That's all I really use it for. Um, I mean, I'm not really worried about if he gets blown up by the, by the end of the first cycle. You know, like I said, I'm just using it for the colorless effect and the, for the chunk blockers. And I also run Doretti Scrap Savant. Now this is three red, three colors, one red. Now it starts off with three loyalty counters. So you can add two, to discard the two cards and draw that many cards. Uh, you can take to loyalty off of to sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return to an artifact card from the graveyard to the battlefield. And then minus 10, you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield beginning next end step. And he also has the ability that he can also be your commander. So with the ready, we're doing a lot of graveyard recursion things. And that's one of the main reasons why I put it in here. Not so much, uh, I'm worried about getting it up to 10 or 11 to, because I'm still doing that with other cards, but, you know, I still like the ability of being able to bring stuff back to the graveyard to my hand to reuse, and plus it has a built-in draw engine. So, you know, that's the reason why I put it in here. All right, guys, that's it for the, this deck. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this build. Uh, it's a budget build. This is probably uh, less than $40 uh, on Moxfield. I'll actually put the link to the whole deck list in the, in the video description. I want to say thank you very much for joining me today. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to put them in the comments below. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you again.